Welcome to Healthy vs. Toxic, the podcast where licensed mental health professionals explore what makes a relationship healthy or unhealthy or even abusive, all from a scientifically informed perspective. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, does the psychologically controlling behavior of a mother with borderline personality disorder contribute to symptoms in their children? Now, to answer this question about psychological control and borderline personality disorder, I'm going to be using an article published in 2018 by Mahan and colleagues, and they look at this question from a few different angles. First, I'm going to start with what borderline personality disorder is, take a look at this construct of psychological control, and then look at the relationship. So, borderline personality disorder is a cluster B personality disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. This is the dramatic, emotional, and erratic cluster. In the definition of borderline personality disorder, we see nine symptom criteria. We have frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, a pattern of unstable relationships, identity disturbance, impulsivity in at least two areas that could be self-damaging, suicidal behavior, gestures, threats, affective instability, a chronic feeling of emptiness, intense, inappropriate anger or difficulty controlling anger, and paranoid ideation or dissociation. There are a number of theories about what causes borderline personality disorder, and we know that part of the etiology, what causes a disorder for borderline personality disorder, is genetic, and another part is environmental. And when we look at the environmental part, there are a lot of theories about how neglect, abuse, and other adverse childhood experiences may contribute to the development of the disorder. So it makes sense that there would be this theory that psychological control could lead to borderline personality disorder or borderline traits. So let's take a look at the concept of psychological control. This is different than behavioral control. Psychological control inhibits or intrudes on the development of adolescent independence. So it interferes in a key step of development. Psychological control comprises a number of different potential behaviors, including negating expressed emotions. So this is when a parent invalidates the emotions of an adolescent, interrupting or talking over. So really a disturbance in verbal communication. We see shaming. We see placing the burden of parental needs on the adolescents. So making the adolescent responsible to meet parental needs. We see blaming accusing, bringing up past mistakes, so not letting errors go from the past. We also see emotional inconsistency and physically demonstrating disapproval, like eye rolling or turning away. So a lot of different behaviors and relational characteristics that could interfere, in theory, with identity formation. That's one of the reasons we believe that psychological control can cause problems, including mental health problems, because of this identity formation component. Now, specifically with borderline personality disorder, we know that identity disturbance is actually one of the symptom criterion. We also believe that psychological control creates an invalidating environment, also thought to lead to borderline personality disorder, and we think it has an association with being emotionally reactive. And if you look at those different characteristics of psychological control, it's easy to see this connection. Hi, I'm Matt Harris. Seton Tucker and I host the podcast Impact of Influence, which for two years covered in depth Alec Murdoch, who was eventually convicted in 2023 of murdering his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul. That story continues to evolve, and we will cover that. Plus, we will tell you stories of other true crime events that have happened in the South. Please join us on Impact of Influence and give us a follow on the Impact of Influence Facebook page. Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show 
and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. So we've taken a look at borderline personality disorder, the idea of psychological control. So what were the results from this study? So this study was specifically looking at maternal psychological control, and it used 56 adolescent participants and 56 mothers. In terms of the mothers, 28 had borderline personality disorder and 28 did not. So this study had an experimental group and a control group. So in terms of the results, we see that there was more psychological control being exerted by the mothers with borderline personality disorder than by the controls. We also saw a positive correlation between maternal psychological control and maternal borderline features. So what this means is the individuals in the study with borderline personality disorder who exerted more psychological control tended to have more severe symptomology. We also saw this association between maternal psychological control, this positive correlation, and adolescent affective instability. So there's a relationship here between the mother's behavior and, in theory, the response of the adolescent. Again, this is a correlation, not a causation, but still an interesting finding. Another finding here is that maternal affective instability, so affective instability in the mother with borderline personality disorder, mediated the relationship between maternal psychological control and adolescent affective instability. So what this means is it explained why or how that relationship exists. That's what the word mediation means. Sometimes when we hear the word mediation, we also think of the word moderation. Moderation explains a change in the strength of a relationship. Mediation explains why. Another interesting finding in this area is that maternal affective instability didn't really have much of a mediating effect between maternal psychological control and adolescent identity disturbance. So we see this mediation effect with affective instability in the adolescents, but not really with identity disturbance. And going back to earlier, I mentioned that one of the theories here with psychological control and borderline personality disorder is that it interferes with identity disturbance. That doesn't seem to be the case, at least as indicated by this particular study. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Ars Longa Media. The producers for this show are Christopher Breidigan and Madison Linden. The executive producer is Dr. Patrick Beeman. For more content, please visit our website at arslanga.media. To leave feedback or suggestions, send an email to info at arslanga.media. To find more content from Dr. Grande, including a link to his YouTube channel and his other Ars Longa podcasts, visit our website at arslanga.media. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only and should not be construed as medical or mental health advice. Ars Longa, Vita Brevis. Welcome to the Bravery Academy. My name is Emma Ferris and I'm your host. This podcast is crafted to share the stories of courageous individuals who have overcome adversity and found the courage to live their best lives. We'll explore the science of well-being, courage and connection and interview top thought leaders, game changers and survivors. It is from these stories that we learn what resilience is, how to heal, how to recover and how to be brave.